what's going on guys so this here is I believe a 2011 2012 uh, street glide that we've recently done a lot of work to it came in wasn't wasn't up and running a lot of the cosmetic stuff was already done to it let me go over what we have done so uh, I got a complete brake rebuild new ABS pump stuff like that obviously we did the LED lights in it the front end the wheels the brakes uh, as far as the rotors and everything were already done Yes, that is a 120R kit that we installed. We did do the Bassani 2 into 1. Also the bars and some more LEDs on the back of it. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm in the break-in period on this motor. This brand new motor, it needs some miles on it before we send it to the dyno. So that's kind of what I'm in the process of doing now. This is the second stint that I'll be putting on it. I put 50 miles on it a few days ago. This will be the second set of mileage that I'm putting on it. So about another 40, 50 miles. Help get it broken before we send it to the dyno. Probably do it a couple more times. I'm still in the building stage. I am not jumping all over this thing just yet. But I am running it hard enough to set everything in place. Make sure we bed in the valves. And you can see we've already got it up over 200 degrees on the oil. So we're going to put a few more miles on it. See what you guys think. Y'all have any questions, let me know below. Like and subscribe, guys. So one thing you will notice with this bike is uh, it not being dyno tuned. It stutters on the bottom pretty bad. So there's definitely... Uh, we, we didn't really map this thing for the 120R. It's basically got a aggressive stock tune in it. So it's it's a little, little light on the fuel for sure. One thing you'll notice whenever I'm doing a, a break-in on this thing is I'm still going to get on the gas hard. I'm still going to get it up to speed. I'm just going to short shift it. I'm not going to rev it to the moon just yet. I'm trying to cap my RPMs under 3,500 for now. The next run, I'll probably step it up to four. And then after that, I'll probably go ahead and step it up to five because uh, it, it needs to run up there before they put it on the dyno. Because I don't know if you've ever seen how hard they run these motors on a dyno, but they... Uh, they don't hold back. They absolutely drop the hammer on these things. So a good way to break them in is obviously ride them around town. Ride them around places that you know. You got to go through all the gears. You got to use the clutch. And accelerate and brake. And uh, obviously whenever I'm, if I'm going to do any engine braking, I'm going to, I'm going to blip it pretty hard to make sure I'm not just you know, throttling down with nothing but valves. So obviously, yes, there's more than one way to break in a motor. I think the, the big keys are heat cycle it several times. The first heat cycle we did, the bike didn't even move. It just did a complete heat cycle. Got the oil up to temperature. Next one, we took it out and babied it. And then I, I rode it home, which I kind of do back roads riding at home. And then the next morning, I kind of did a country cruise like this. Again, a lot of accelerating, decelerating, not sitting in the RPM range. I'm actually a little bit under the RPM range I want to be. I want to keep this thing above 2,000 RPM pretty much all the time because it does have a high lift cam in it. And dogging those high lift cams can just wear everything out. So that 2,000 RPM range is kind of my minimum. Especially under a heavy acceleration. Obviously, if I'm starting off the bottom, I don't want to be riding the clutch too hard. So I'll uh, I'll start under, and, and you can tell, especially with this bike, it does not want to be under 2,000 RPMs, and it really just starts pulling around 3,000. So I fully expect this thing to do, you know, over 120 horsepower, 120 foot pounds, whenever we get it dyno tuned. And uh, I told the owner this, and I'll uh, reiterate, this is one of the best riding twin cam street glides I have ever been on. Typically you do big wheels and stuff like this, it you know feels bouncy, the front end feels heavy. 
this is a very well balanced bike very good handling bike very comfortable bike these bars are they're a little high for me but man I could I would not complain definitely like the exhaust notes on the Bassani know it'll make good power and it was readily available you start looking at these older street glides some parts are really hard to come by right now So that's a pretty good example of short shifting. I went a little higher than I wanted to, but uh, the motor easily could take it. I'm not too worried about it there. Um, again, a key is to pick an RPM, try to stick to it. And it's not like that's where you run on the run the bike the entire time. Whenever you're doing engine break-ins, it's it's all about you know the pull constantly trying to put a pull on the motor. Do not stick at the same RPMs. If you get in a, a situation like this, you know accelerate a little bit, back off it a little bit. That's all you got to do. Obviously, you want to switch through the gears as much as possible because that that pull is really what seats everything in. Putting pressure on the pistons, the rings, the valves. Letting there be plenty of heat in that bottom end. A lot of people say, you know, these, these bikes don't need to be warmed up because they're not carbureted. Well, for the fuel sense, yeah, that's true. But the bottom end needs to be heated up. Everything is set to spec on that bottom end and those bottom ends are only meant to be run hard whenever they have temperature in them those bearings are, are pretty stiff whenever they are cold you put heat in them that really frees them up and that's what you want you don't want to be trying to put a big pull on that cold motor you want everything heated up when everything freed up with the bottom end of that motor be able to spin easily if not, that's when you'll see, you know, like piston slap and stuff like that. And a broken motor, a properly broken motor, will make more power. Everything seats in better. So guys have any questions, hit me up below. Please like and subscribe. Whenever I get back to the shop, we'll do a quick walk around on this beautiful motorcycle. Try to point out again everything that we did to it, everything we touched. Very happy with the way this bike came out. It was a beautiful bike to begin with. We just put a little more power underneath it. Updated some of the lighting. Put an oil cooler on it as well. The gentleman who bought this bike lives even further south than we are and he was very concerned about the heat coming off of it and this motor does put off some heat well, it's a nice cool morning here well, I say cool it's probably getting close to 90 by now it's probably in the mid 80s pretty high humidity where we're at comfortable right now you come to a stop they'll start creeping through town it, it gets pretty hot pretty quick so even even the oil temperature is showing 216 degrees. View that see there's a nice stutter. Stutter and go. Yeah, it definitely needs a tune. For those of you that don't know where we're located at, so we're basically in between San Antonio in Austin, Texas, along I-35. We are two miles off the highway. Where I'm riding at is west of there. And basically anything west of 35 in this South Central Texas area is pretty damn good riding. A lot of people refer to hill country all over Texas. But leaving our shop and heading west towards Canyon Lake, it, it gets real pretty real quick. The roads are great. I mean, real great. I lived in Oklahoma for a long time, so I, I know what bad roads are. I've driven through Louisiana on I-10. I know all about that. But uh, yeah, our, our roads are really good out here. There's great places to eat, great places to camp. 
if you guys want to come stay we see a lot of visitors especially when it gets cold up north I mean we get guys from you know Minnesota the Dakotas all around that area they come down and hang out with us for the for the winter and ride almost every day we might have a couple weeks here and there where it's too cold or too wet but uh, this whole area is pristine riding country for not only the the ride the views but you know the food the the roads obviously you can ride all day and never leave Texas pretty easily now are there better places to ride absolutely you know I, I'd love getting up in Colorado go north to Zion National Park out of Vegas is pretty cool this time of year anywhere but down south is a good place to ride it's just too damn hot but the roads are good the views are good again the food is good plenty of places to stay if you can afford the gas come on down so yeah a lot of beautiful farmland beautiful countryside rolling hills trees we do have a lot of small deer that you have to look out for and when they're rutting they will obviously run right in front of you and as warm as it is down here as plentiful as you know food acorns all that stuff are man they uh they reproduce a good four or five times a year it's it's a constant constant struggle and uh you see them as much in town as you do out on the countryside And they are smaller than, uh, than a lot of deer, but uh, they are plentiful. There are a lot of them. You get out in the country, you also have to look out for javelina, you know, hogs, wild hogs run all over the place. They're not huge by any means, but man, when they decide to go across the road, all you see is a black blur. That probably scares me more than anything because they don't, they don't hesitate. They just streak across. So if you're uh, riding Texas Hill Country, you definitely got to look out for wildlife. But if you have any questions about the roads I'm on right now, uh, I took 46 out. Came, coming back 1863 with uh, Smithson Valley Drive connecting them. People ask, you know, the Three Sisters are pretty famous. That's quite a bit further west. It's about two hours west of the shop. But you do take 46 is definitely one of the ways out to Bandera. Cool little area. A lot of good roads. Um, th there are other great places to ride. Definitely wouldn't limit yourself to just, oh, I got to go do the Three Sisters. Because, uh, man, any, any country hill ride in this way, out around Canyon Lake, the road from Blanco to Lukenbach or Fredericksburg is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of rain, so everything's dried up down here. It's not quite as pretty and green as it usually is. Got a little bit of break this morning with the cloud cover. But it has been historically hot in South Texas, South, South Central Texas. We eclipsed our 100 degree mark last month a dozen times, which the record was six, so... And it's not crazy hot, it's, you know, just barely over 100, but with the humidity that we have here, cl so close to the coast, it, uh, it feels much hotter, for sure. So I think we're, we're in for a hot and long summer, which is pretty typical. We definitely have a lot of, a lot of hot, humid days. Wake up in the morning, it's already 80 degrees. 70% humidity it's it's pretty warm usually in the afternoon it gets hotter but the the humidity lifts quite a bit if you guys have any questions comment below please like and subscribe try to get some more content up this second half of the year the first half is pretty busy we can start playing with the conjecture on what Harley's going to do for 2023. It's anniversary year. Obviously, we're in the midst of a 
global economic collapse, but uh, the ship's got to ride at some point, so still waiting to see what Harley's going to do with their Icon collection. A lot of rumors out there with the El Diablo, you know, the Lowrider ST in red and gold pinstriping. I, I don't know if that's the direction they're going to go. I mean, that bike just came out. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do a newish version of the bike that just came out. That doesn't really come from Harley's playbook. Maybe they'll just do a red one for 23 and it'll be at the anniversary. I don't know. I have no doubt that somebody's seen one and I, I don't have any inside information. I can tell you that much. It'd be cool to see. You know, back in 84, they did the, the low rider ST or the, what was technically? Technically it was a sport glide is what they called it. It had the big fairing on it, the bags. It was red with a little bit of gold pinstriping. That was a cool bike. That's actually the one that uh, Hal and those guys took on the uh, One Lap of America, the Bull Run Challenge, or the Bull Run Ring, whatever they called it. That story is still, I'm still working work in progress on that. I'd love to tell it, but uh, I need more information. But I think we'll see some cool stuff in 2023. I think we'll see another, you know, small bike revolution max style especially with uh with gas prices doing what they're doing it would be pretty smart to harley to do an even smaller displacement you know in town type bike gets good mileage even in the city doesn't put off disastrous heat because yes i do have a pan american man that thing if you're out cruising, as long as you're, you know, above 30 miles an hour, the heat's tolerable. Kind of like this thing. This thing put, puts off a lot of heat as well. Obviously, the oil is up to 225 now. You make it enough power, it's going to put off heat. The thing on the Pan America is just that exhaust. Stain, it gets warm. And when this thing gets hot, it doesn't, uh, I'm sure it's probably detonating. So what it is it's not got enough fuel in it where it's, it's just igniting and that's why you get that stutter off the bottom for those of you wondering what this little guy is that is the oil cooling fan indicator so whenever that thing is on as i spit and sputter my way That is just indicating that my oil, oil cooling fan is, is running. So yes, it would probably be advantageous to have a, a full blown tune in this thing. I'm sure it would run a little bit better. But uh, I mean, for heat cycles, it's gonna be just fine. Once we get it, uh, uh, probably one more big heat cycle in it like this, we will send this thing off to the dyno tuner, have it dial in. And we're, we're being overly cautious. You could easily just put a couple good heat cycles in this thing and send it to the dyno tune. There's also dyno tuners who will do it for you. Yes, you can break in on the dyno. It's just, for a dyno tuner, it's, it's pretty time consuming because you're bringing the bike up to temperature got to cool it all the way back down do it a couple times or you can just go out and ride it a little bit all right guys that was it so that's the 120r kit from screaming eagle harley davidson installed into this bike along with a good set of bars the exhaust we did the oil cooler as well so far holding up pretty good. Ultra Cool I think is the name brand on the oil cooler. Not a whole lot available on the older ones. Getting outfitted with LEDs across the board. Set of Metzler's Cru Metzler Cruise Techs. Have any questions, comment below. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one.